Hello there, people. This is a video for a contest. Uh, I'm usually far too lazy to uh, do contests for some reason. I can't seem to motivate myself to make videos for them. But this is for Tim Morant's contest, and he wants to know what our favorite book is. And since uh, an issue of it actually came out this week, I figured I'd do a video. But I'm also going to go literal with it, too, in that here is the uh, book. It's a Good Life If You Don't Weaken by the one-named uh, cartoonist Seth. I think his actual name is Gregory Gallant. Um, and this is one of my... This might be... I'd say this is my favorite current comic, if you can call it a current comic. It comes from... It was first serialized in a comic called Palookaville. Uh, that was issue three of Palookaville. Here's issue four, which has the first installment of It's a Good Life If You Don't Weaken. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. I think ninth is the end of the It's a Good Life If You Don't Weaken story. Um, and, uh, but, 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 what am I saying here? The story is, uh, is one of these um, autobiographical comics, so it actually stars um, Seth, the cartoonist, where is his, though I don't know... That's him right there. Though I'm not sure how autobiographical it actually is or just has the appearance of an autobi autobiography because, where is that cover? If we, if we look at the cover to number nine, you can see there that's supposed to be a self-portrait by this artist named Kalo. And um, the story is about Seth living his life and trying to figure out life from day to day as a, uh, you know, Canadian cartoonist. And he's also, he collects old New Yorker cartoons. So he stumbles upon this old New Yorker cartoonist named Kalo, who only did a few cartoons in uh, the New Yorker. And he becomes obsessed with, tra who was this guy Kalo? And, um... Why did he only do a few cartoons for the New Yorker? You know, that was, that was a bit... So, you know, he's, he tracks down all these old cartoons. He goes into old... But the story takes place over a few years. And, interesting, the reason I say I'm not sure exactly how much of it is fiction and fact is he made up the cartoonist Kalo. He's not... The cartoonist Kalo does not exist as a real person. He's made up for part of the story. And I can remember at the time when people found out that the cartoonist Kalo didn't actually exist. They were all upset. It was like, ah, oh, we, we wanted, they, they wanted him to be real. They wanted this mystery of Seth tracking down this cartoonist Kalo to be real so much that they were a little upset when it wasn't real. But the story itself is, like I said, it's, it's done in this um, two-tone, this is actually a, a library book I bought, uh, one of the, you know, remainder library book that I bought off of Amazon many years ago. I used to have a trade paperback of this that fell apart because it had glued binding. Um, and I actually prefer it in the large, you know, the last time I read it, I actually read the issues because I like it at the larger size uh, rather than the smaller one. By the way, if anyone ever sees issue one or two of Palookaville, let me know because I... Never seemed to be able to track down issues. Well, I haven't looked in a while, but for years I was trying to track down issues one and two, and they were never around. I got a 10th anniversary edition of issue one, but it's this size, you know, the smaller size rather than the comic book size. A um, couple other things that uh, Seth has done. Paluca Palookaville is now this size. It's now a hardcover book. I, the reason I'm making this video is because I just got the latest one this week. 22 just came out this week, so now we get, um, there's 20. So the first 19 issues are comic books, and the last three are, they come out once every two years or so. 
let's see the first the first issue 20 that was a hard cover came out in I'm not going to be able to see this without reading glasses up until about three years ago I didn't need these but now for this tiny type I need to see oh great they've got a fake indicia in here Where's the real indicia? Where's the real year it came out? Oh, they're driving me crazy. Okay, I don't know the real year that... Uh... Oh, it's in the back. There we go. 2010. So that one came out in 2010. The next one came out in... 2013. There's a nice big year. Don't need your... And then 2015, so takes a while for them to come out. And the uh, the story that's been running in Palookaville since let's see since issue number 10, Clyde fans. This is the story that's been running, and here is a special chat book edition of it where they collected what they have it takes so long for this to come out that it's but this is just this as an old man telling you his story of his life um he worked for a family business that sold fans and the fan business is dying they can't even get parts for him anymore and he's got conflicts with his brother that he goes back to that came in. and i just find it i i had a I've had people describe this as issue after issue of nothing happening. And there's some truth to that, but I just love the love the guy's story. I think Seth is just a great cartoonist, tells great stories, and even if this is also it was it was with um it was with this one. It's a good like if you don't we weaken that I um which is my pick for favorite book. Palookaville overall, this story. That when I was reading, I was having a, the end of this is a little iffy, I remember thinking, and some of it I didn't quite get, even though it's straightforward. Then I was reading an interview with the cartoonist Seth in this, and he said something along the lines of, my work isn't about the plot, it's about the feeling. And I said to myself, ah, oh, that makes so much more sense, because he's really... And 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 I had never thought of that before, only because I'm so used to everything being plot driven. That something not plot driven really didn't that doesn't occur to the front of my mind all the time. But this book really isn't. This book is about capturing a feeling, about capturing a feeling of living life day to day, about capturing a feeling of trying to figure out a little mystery, about capturing a feeling of uh, what the world is about. Because especially since um. As a character in this book, Seth, you can see he's always wearing the old... He's always wearing that old time... He feels out of place. He wants to be alive. He thinks he'd be happier if he was alive in the 1950s. Um, so... It's all about... He feels out of... His feeling is being out of place all the time, so... that That's captured very well in here, too. And then he's got a couple other things. We'll just throw you show you some more Seth stuff. Wimbledon Green. This is just, um, what is this? The greatest comic book collector in the world. This is just this little, I think they call, he calls one of these his sketchbook stories because they're not, I mean, I think that it's wonderful. They're just these little, he draws these little drawings in his sketchbook over time and makes them, this is, this is, there's a lot of plot in this one. Look at these little tiny drawings. I read this back before I needed reading glasses. I look at it now and go, wow, that's tiny, but my uh, eyes 10 years ago had no problem with it. But this is the story of, um, it's, it takes place in a world where comic books are one of the highest art forms and everybody loves them and they track down old issues and there's a few, Wimbledon Green is a mysterious comic book collector who nobody's really sure who he is or if he's a cover for somebody else. And it's like done as kind of an expose of who is Wimbledon Green and 
how did he come up with how did he find the greatest comic collections of all time and it's just a fun if you're a comic book fan this is a fun fun book and then um the other one another fun the the great northern brotherhood of canadian cartoonists once again it's um it takes place in a world eh, a little bit bigger panels in a world where you know everybody loves comics and there's cartoonists or heroes and there's stories about them and once again the these two are both his the these two are just like fun 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 stuff that he did in his uh calls them his sketchbook comics and they're they're really fun and then uh we've got an oversized one george sprott take a look at this and he's still doing teeny tiny panels well this is one of his nostalgia like i said he, seth is really really into nostalgia he really this is made up of a whole bunch of little strip goes through this george sprott who was god i haven't read this one in a while i think he was in the early days of canadian tv he had something to do with it, at least in you know the world he has such he has such a strong feeling of nostalgia and all this that it, it, it it's hard to believe that these people didn't actually exist who there's such nostalgia for. Um, wonderful, wonderful book. Big, I just, you know, like a, George Sprott is one of my favorites. As a matter of fact, if you'll excuse me for just one second. I, I actually forgot I had this. But on eBay many years ago, I actually brought a page of original art from Seth. This is mostly it's pencil on tracing paper, and it's pretty battered stuff. He's, I don't think he's, he doesn't sell the finished pages, but these are the, um, these are the prelim drawings. Matter of fact, I even took... This is the, I, I, I took a scan of the page and printed it out just so I could have the finished page around, even though it's just a cop. So there's that drawing and there's the finished page. So I even got a piece of original art from uh, my favorite book. Um, it's a good life if you don't weaken. Let me see, do I have that page marked? I wish I did. It says page 11. Eh. It's somewhere in here where there are flying kites. I'm going to have to read this again. But anyway, for Tim Morant's contest, here you go. My favorite book. It's a good life if you don't weaken. Which runs in Palookaville. So, you guys have a good one out there. We'll catch you later.